In ecology, the matrix is not about people in long trench coats dodging bullets while plugged into a hyper-real computer program. When we talk about the matrix in ecology, we are talking about the areas that surround patches of remnant vegetation. Many native plants and animals can only live in native vegetation. It's their habitat, their home. However, people have cleared most of the native vegetation for livestock and housing. This creates the matrix, the areas that native species can't live in. Once isolated in patches, native species are at risk of dying out. If individuals from other patches can't disperse to replace the lost populations, the species will gradually vanish from the whole landscape. The obvious solution is to revegetate the land, to convert the matrix back to habitat. But we've got to grow food and put houses somewhere. How can we help our native plants and animals to survive in farming and urban landscapes? To answer that question, we need to understand how the matrix affects species living in patches. The matrix influences species living in patches through three core effects. Effects on movement, effects on resources like food, and effects on the abiotic or non-living environment. Consider a farmland scattered with trees. If paddock trees are taken away from this farmland, birds that used to be able to move between patches either decide not to try or die on the way. The ability for species to move through the matrix is critical for their survival. The matrix benefits some species, like weeds and some insect pests, that thrive on the resources provided by the open spaces in the matrix. If this happens, these pests can invade patches of native vegetation, and that might not be good for the native species living there. The matrix can also affect the non-living environment of patches. Think of a forest standing next to farmland. At the edge of the forest it's drier, windier, and lighter than deeper inside the forest. The abiotic environment is different. This kind of environment can allow weedy species to invade the patch, leaving less room in the patch for native species. These three core effects of the matrix, movement, resources, and the abiotic environment, all affect native plants and animals in patches. But these effects also exist within five dimensions, and those dimensions change the way the core effects influence species. Let's have a look at these five dimensions. The effect of the matrix can vary from place to place. Different matrix types in different parts of the landscape mean that movement, for example, might be higher in some places than in others. If there is a lot of matrix, there can be a lot of pest species living in it, and so there are more to outcompete or even eat the native species in patches. The effect of the matrix may be more severe if it is more extensive. The matrix can change over time. If someone decided to grow a tree plantation on their farm, the conditions in the matrix would change as the trees grew up. The growing plantation could let some forest species move across the landscape until suddenly, when the trees are harvested, the forest species would again be confined to patches. As the tree plantation grows up, animals that can quickly move through trees but not paddocks will soon be able to move between patches. Animals that move slowly might only expand halfway between patches before harvesting, so the speed with which species move and reproduce determines if they can benefit from short-term changes in the matrix. Species might evolve and adapt to the matrix through natural selection. Some individuals might have natural advantages that help them to survive in landscapes with a lot of matrix. However, adaptation is unlikely to solve the problems faced by most species in a hostile matrix. That's because there may not be enough natural variation to fully compensate for the extremes that creatures will face in the matrix. With the knowledge we have about the matrix, it's now up to policymakers, funding agencies and land managers to make the matrix a friendlier place for native species. On top of that, we need researchers to work with land managers to find new ways to modify the matrix so that it helps to sustain our natural heritage. <laughs>